one of the most controversial topics with GraphQL is caching. Thankfully, we have GraphCDN. It allows us to proxy all of our GraphQL requests through their gateway so we can cache and make use of their fast CDN to cache all of our requests that we make to the API. As well as caching, GraphCDN gives us the ability to deep dive into all of the analytics around what requests have been made to our service, as well as informing us when any errors occur. GraphCDN has a generous free tier if you want to include the badge inside of your site to show that it's powered by GraphCDN. To get started, we can log in or sign up using GitHub, GitLab, or your email address. I'll sign in with my GitHub and create my very first service. I'll begin by providing a GraphQL API URL for the service that I'll be using, as well as setting a service URL. I'll name this CartQL to match the API that I'm using for the subdomain for the GraphCDN application. I'll also disable the authenticated requests header. I'll be using a GraphQL shopping cart API that allows us to add items to a cart, update them, remove them, set all of the items and much more. Back inside of the GraphCDN dashboard, I can see the analytics for my service. I can see what percentage of requests are cached, the P50, 95 and 99 percentiles of my requests, as well as what queries, mutations and errors occurred. Let's open the API Playground inside of GraphCDN and make a request to fetch the cart from our service. We can see on the right that if we make a request that there is a cache miss and the response time is significantly more than if we make the request again and get a cache hit, it's considerably less. Let's now make a mutation against our service endpoint. We'll add a new item to the cart with a specific ID, name description, some images and a price. If we run this, we'll see that the cache result is a pass and we have a response time from that mutation. We can continue to run this as many times as we like, it will return a pass in the cache. If we go back to query our cart, you'll see that we have a cache miss. And if we make another request, you can see we have a cache hit. GraphCDN will automatically invalidate anything in the cache that matches the response to any mutations that we run if all requests are made through the GraphCDN service gateway. If we update the query for fetching our cart to include the quantity of the items in the cart, we can see that the cache is a miss. If we run it again, we'll get a hit with a faster response time. If you've been following along inside of the GraphCDN dashboard, you've probably noticed that the analytics haven't updated from the demo data that you can see. You'll actually want to use the service URL that you specified when creating a new service. If we go to that service URL, we make some queries and mutations and go back to the GraphCDN dashboard, we can now see that all of our graphs and analytics have updated as well as all of the queries and mutations that we've run are now being logged inside of GraphCDN. GraphCDN also gives us the ability to enable or disable the cache entirely. It also allows us to create some rules for individual types or fields inside of our query. We can also scope data, set key fields on types as well as configure custom headers that we can pass with requests to bypass the cache. If you're using GraphCDN with a service that you perform mutations outside of your service URL, you'll want to use the admin API to purge any of your cache data inside of GraphCDN. GraphCDN also allows you to limit the depth of your queries, as well as in the future, allow you to add some rate limiting and much more. You can set custom domains, set API keys for your purging, get weekly updates on how your API service is performing, as well as many other things.